Mama Plate Clot, Ras Flaco Tafari. The lividity of Rastafari is crucial. Not everyone who is growing locks on their head today, smoking cannabis, and eating ital is a true Rastafari. The Prophet did show we that wolf going to come in sheep clothing. So when we look today, we see a lot of those. Ancient Bongo Tani. Wise Mind Publications. Trademark. Unshackle Your Mind. Copyright. Wise Mind Publications. 2017. All rights reserved. No part of this publication may be reproduced or stored without prior permission of the publisher. Mama Plate Clot Written by Ross Flacco Tafari Edited by Ross Flacco Tafari Proof read by Idrin Dario and Sister Naya. Layout by Flaco Tafari. Cover design by Antonio Barrett. Published by Wise Mind Publications. Distributed by Wise Mind Publications. Contact Ross Flacco at gmail.com R A S F L A K O at gmail.com Wise Mind Publications at gmail.com HTTP colon slash slash wise mind publications dot com Table of Contents Page four Born Rasta and Life with My Parents Page six my first Nyabingi. Page 8. Memory of ancient Bongo time and others. Page 10. The priesthood today. Page 13. Individuals and their behavior. Page 16. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church and Repatriation. Page 18. Data in Rastafari. in Rastafari. Page 19. Bingi Tribulation. Page 27. Death of Priest George Irons. Born Rastafari. I born a Rasta, meaning I was born in the faith of Rastafari. I am the first youth for I father. I grew up hearing my father saying Rasta. However, I could not grow locks, and none of my siblings could either. I grew up in Kilsum, Kingston City. I started growing locks on the 14th of October, 1973. I throw away the comb. 
I have two brothers who were Rastafari before my mother has the faith. And she said she doesn't want her children to grow locks. She said the same thing about our father. Life with my parents. With my parents. I never see my mother giving my father a face basin with a toothbrush or toothpaste and towel. She never provided water for my father to wash his face and brush teeth. I knew my father getting up early and used the morning dew from the banana leaf or the cocoa leaf to wash his face. Opposite the kitchen, we had a chew stick tree, another tree that we called crocus or search me heart that my father used to boil tea with, along with green ganja herb. My father instructed us to chew the chew stick and use it to clean our teeth, as it was good for the gum. When we eat and belch, we cannot say excuse we, have to say give thanks. When we ease our body, we cannot say excuse, we have to say beg pardon or give thanks. My father was a farmer. I experienced my father, my father digging a hole, digging a hole in, the in the earth. He placed the he cocoa, placed leaf, the cocoa inside leaf inside the hole. Inside the hole. Placed the peel, the peel, and the sweet cassava cocoa. inside, and the and sweet cassava, the cassava inside. No water was added. And then cover the hole. He then put the fire for the food to cook. We sat down with our hands at our jaw, looking, wondering how the food cooked like that. We ask ourselves if that food could really eat. When my father took out the food, we eat it with pear. What a food sweet! I never in my life taste that food anywhere else. When we were thirsty, we got water from the spring. We had no Rasta picture in our house. The only picture we had was one picture of Jesus with a long beard. My father said we are all the children of God. However, he did not sit to explain what he meant. In my curiosity to know about Rasta, I started to speak to the friends of my father who were Rasta, and also the district constable, nicknamed my father Ganja. My father was nicknamed Shadow. He carried a very sharp cutlass. No one dared to argue with him People were afraid of him. He always has a very long ganja spliff in his mouth. The district constable was afraid of him because he had the fire in his mouth and the cutlass in his hand. But give thanks my father was not involved in any crime. I and my two brothers crowned our mother first with our locks. I also had my nephews who had locks, but they were not living in our community. I and my two brothers crowned our mother first with our locks. When we did that, my mother sat down and cried. 
I have some nephews who are Rastafari. They came to that consciousness of on their own. The only thing they did with their locks was to wash it and grow it. My first Nyabingi. The first Bingi I trod was in Kingston. Many ancients were at that Isis, including Bongo Wato, Bongo Daniel, Bongo Headful, and Bongo Biga, who played one of the sweetest funde. When Bongo Biga started to play the harps, he played all night until the Bingi sealed. There were two Dota that I cannot forget. One was Dota Joan, who was ancient Bongo Jack Empress. I also know Mama Baby Eye. Before I was trotting to the Nyabingi, we used to walk and follow Mama Baby Eye. I get to know more about ancient Bongo Wato during my time in the Nyabingi house. He was a leader for the Nyabingi, and he was about discipline and order. Ancient Bongo Daniel functioned with the harps. He was a master drummer. Ancient Bongo Tawny was also an excellent kete player. However, it is how you play the harps that ones will stay with you and chant. Now, Bongo Tawny was easy to get in my al which is Revival and Pokomania. These are different spirituality. So it takes some time for you to come out of Nyabingi and move into Poco and then return to Nyabingi. As such, if you are not careful, so your soul vibrations could stay during that transition. There were also other Rasta men who played a poco beat during the Isis. So you keep wondering, where are you going and why you are going on these journeys? Bongo Daniel, when he touches the harps, the beats is well defined. There was one occasion during my first Bingi trod when the police invaded the Nyabingi gathering and ordered Rasta to stop play the drums. Bongo Daniel would not, not comply, comply and he and took, he up, took the up the largest, largest bass, drum, bass drum, holding it tight on his, his head. head. Walk, walk barefoot, barefoot to the police commanding officer. The ancient then kneeled down before the bass drum and beat it so loud, I thought he would end up deaf. In 1992, during the centenary celebrations of Haile Selassie, when we were doing a motorcade around Jamaica, Bongo Daniel played the kete. We all reach a very high level of spirituality. Even the animals in the pasture were trying to run alongside with the moving vehicle. It seems like the sound of Bongo Daniel's playing was attracting them. It was so amazing in 1992. When I trod Nyabingi, I did not know Bongo Puru as the high priest. I only know Bongo Time. However, I knew of ancient Bongo Puru giving orders in the house. Memories of ancient Bongo Time and others. Ancient Bongo Time was a father to I and I. He chant, pray, and cry for I and I. If he heard any brethren 
purring in the daughter's quarters. He would sit beside the daughter in the quarters and cry. He would say, "Don't worry." He would say some sweet things to make you feel so happy. Bongo time was our king man, our father, our brother, our teacher, and our friend. I can remember when Bongo time started a partner draw and throw the first hand in the partner. He then called us in the daughter's quarters and told us that the partner is ours and we should keep it going. What a father he was to I and I daughters. If he heard a child crying, you would see the ancient walking with his knock knee to the daughter's quarters. When he found out which child was crying, he would go and sit beside the youth with his hands rubbing his head in comfort and asking, "What is the problem?" When he learns of the problem, he would say hush and ask the child if he or she had food to eat if the answer was no and if the mother of the child did not have food bongo time would find food not for that child only but for the many other children who were present bongo used to wear a shirt with four pockets that he filled with ganja He also filled his pants pockets with ganja. However, no one knew that those pockets had ganja until he was at the bingi. And when the ancient arrived at the daughter's quarters, he gave the sisters who were present all the ganja that was in his pockets. It is very sad sometimes when I remember ancient Bongo time and to know that he is not with I and I today. Ancient Bongo Shefin was very caring and kind, and kind to I and I. When the ancient priest Bongo Shefin was presenting something to any dada, he was so discreet and no one knew what the other one received. the priesthood today In the early days of my experience we had priest princess and empress all around Now we have nothing at all There is a breakaway that I don't know how to explain One particular priest claim that he is sabbath priest However the sabbath is not supported by the majority of Rastafari if and when the sabbath is called it end in quarrel and cursing the order of the nyabingi today is not functioning as it was before if it was not for the mercy of emperor haile selassi and empress menen there would be many things that caused death among rastafari However, things work a different way. As many have been removed from earth because of their sin, so many of them went around and about discriminating and talking all manner of evil against each other. From the time that the order of the Nyabingi evolves from groundation, we don't know where we are. Many at one time we were told that the Nyabingi was registered as a limited liability company. In the early days much more Rastafari would attend functions. We did not have own transportation and when we decided to stop a vehicle the people wanted to know where we were running away to. We were carrying almost everything we had, even our bed, which we shared with other sisters. 
We also took care of the children. We bathed them and put them to rest on our bed when they wanted to sleep. We had nowhere special but under a tree. Many times when I woke up at a Scots Pass bingy, I found myself under the oil nut tree. And when I looked, my body was printed out on the cardboard bed that I slept on. I was very happy to be there. It was not only at Scott's Pass Bingy Ground we had cardboard beds. It was a common thing to see. We were so peaceful that the calm head people were so glad to see us that when we sat down to reason with them, we could not be in a hurry to leave. When the people carried food for us to eat, we had enough to roast and boil. We hardly cooked meals. It was mostly roast food we prepared. We roast pumpkin, cassava, yams, and more. Today we are not hiding to proclaim Rastafari. I can remember when I started to trod with the congregation of the Nyabingi. No one stole food. You had it abundant. Also, people gave you food. We had so much food on the Bingi grounds that some combhead people begged food to take to their homes. There was so much food that we could share. First time when we had to reason on the Bingi grounds and we looked on the altar, we would find roots bitters, water, honey, ganja herb, and fresh flowers. There is nothing like that anymore. It's a total breakdown. What we have now regarding the sharing of the sacrament during the Isis, only special people will receive as there is a look in the face situation before the herb is given. Today mankind have changed from the teachings of His Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie. On one occasion when I visited Scott's Pass Bingi grounds when they were holding a Sabbath gathering, I was told by one prominent ancient that the Bingi that I was longing to attend will not take place. Again, I was in a total amazement after hearing that statement. Wise Mind Publications Individuals and their behavior There are many people who don't know the history of the order of the Nyabingi. I can remember Sister Aina, Sister Miriam, Dada Bubbles, Matriarch Nanny, and Ma Shanti. Over time, you then realize what you learn from those ancient mamas, which is the principle of how to live as a Rasta Dada. You should not burn a spliff standing. You must sit down. You should not burn a spliff on an empty stomach. And any one of those ancient mamas find you smoking on an empty stomach, you will be asked the reason why you're smoking like that. I used to see a sign posted at the Nyabingi gate about how to conduct yourself on the Bingi grounds. Unfortunately, the sign is removed from Pitfor and Scott's Pass Bingi grounds. I think that there are plans to mash up the order of the Nyabingi. I have witnessed in the tabernacle where man grab man and beat man. Concerning High Priest Bongo George Irons, if he can overpower you, he will have his ways. However, if you stand up to him, there will be no problem. The ancient priests don't often give justice in everything, but in a time he will come to his senses. None of them can walk in ancient priest Bongo Time shoes. Even when he has become an ancestor, they cannot walk in his dead booth. Ancient Bongo Ionai and Bongo Leo 
are among the present seven priests who are respected for their good works. Bunny Whaler was a man that I had so much high respect. There come a time no matter how much you are being respected, someone will look on you lower than who you are. As a result, I was shocked by his behavior for my tradition of Rastafari is not to slew another Rasta. I have respected Bunny Whaler over the years. I will not forget when I began to say Rastafari and saw how much Bunny Whaler made contribution to the house of Rastafari. The, the fact, fact is, is that, Bunny, that Whaler Bunny Whaler called seven trumpet call in Jamaica. The first trumpet call I attend, it was the police on our back. You see? The second one, it's the same. Police in a week clot, same way. The third one, it was the same police in a ah, what's it not? Same way. I tell myself that I will not be going back there as I don't know what this is all about. The time, time when, when I attended, attended the, citizens the citizens who were, who were there, there in the community, in the community stood, up stood up and prevented the police from further abusing us. Remember, it was not a Nyabingi, but a trumpet call. Where the event was held was at a school in the yard when the police came in their mad rush. The people in who lived nearby looked out from their high-rise building and shouted to the police, shouting, Left the people them on can lock up the people them. It is not them who carried themselves there, it is the work of Bunny Whaler. No, no one, one knew where, where Bunny, Bunny Whaler, Whaler was. was. At that, that time, time we were on we our were own. Our own. And, when and when everything, everything was said and, said and done, done, we, we had, had to make, to make haste, haste and leave the premises. We were greeted by a battalion of police who went into the building. After we went through the gate, they removed the furniture owned by Bunny Whaler, placing them on the sidewalk, and then chain locked the gate of the building. It was an eviction. That was a big disrespect unto Rasta. On several occasions, I sight up Bunny Whaler chanting in the bingi and calling on Rasta for I and I and fear in I. And every time he chanted that way, I fire burn it. He did not change so one of the time. When I looked around, I saw that he came out of the tabernacle and went to sit outside on a chair. I went and sat beside him. I said, Brethren, Ayla, I don't love how the I do it. I and I chanting Rasta living in I, and Rasta is for I and I. And the I a chant Rasta fear in I. Bunny Whaler never wrath with I nor show vexation. He just turned around and said, Rasta, that is how I hail Rastafari. I did not wrath with him. I just leave him alone. Otherwise, I still respect him. Why is mine publications? The Ethiopian Orthodox Church. I have never experienced the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, but I would love to. I read speeches of Emperor Haile Selassie and also heard individuals reading similar speeches of the Emperor referring to the church and it shows how much Emperor Haile Selassie 
is pointing I and I to the church. Also, many Rastafari who have attended the church always speak of what they have learnt. Repatriation. Repatriation is a must, Bengi. However, there is another thing about repatriation. The big question is how many of I and I Rastafari is ready to repatriate? Because if I don't prepare myself, I cannot repatriate. I can see that financially and otherwise we are not ready. We can all see that time is going by. Now check this. From the time that ancient Bongo Rocky and Mama Baby Eye step out, I can remember clearly when Dada Baby Eye and Bongo Rocky sent a video to the Bingi house calling I and I to come home. Mama Baby Eye made me cry. She called us by our names. She said, Dr. Evelyn, Dr. Yuda, I knew that I was that Dr. Evelyn. The other one is from another community. I used to cook for Mama Baby Eye. When I heard my phone ring and I respond, it was Mama Earth, the Empress of Ancient Igus. She said, Ancient Igus, I want to reason with I. It was an urgent calling for I and I to repatriate. The message from the Ethiopian daughter was, they are waiting anxiously for I and I to be home. They are depending on I and I. The many ones who were the key persons who were advising us to trot home, where are they now? All Rastafari that I can remember those who trod Rastafari from the early days amount to about only 10 alive today. Ancient Igus I cried daily to go home. He did not want to pass away in Jamaica. If I reach Ethiopia, I would not desire to return to Jamaica at my present age. Data in Rastafari. Many data are being abused verbally by the brethren. Many times free speech is lacking as data are told to shut up when they are trying to express their point of views. The wickedest thing, they don't live near you, they don't know a thing about you. They make it look like you can't do them anything. Only they can do things to you. Bingi Tribulation I witness a terrible thing on the Bengi ground. In the month of May, that brethren who traveled from South Manchester to Scott Pass, I don't know what went wrong with him. He took sick on the ground and ran out of the tabernacle in the early part of the night during the Isis. We found him in the morning in some prickle maca bush. He was alive but had many scrapes from the thorns. Now in the month of June, the Nyabingi was held at Irish Pen. It was called by Dada Sappel. There was one brethren whom we knew very well. He came in the Dada's quarters when we were preparing to go in the Nyabingi Isis. The brethren then left and went into the tabernacle. A few minutes, I sound, I heard the loud voice of another brethren, whose name was Sensi, shouting outside. I hurriedly dressed myself and went outside. I behold Sensi at the fire key. I went to give him a hail up. He replied, What you say, plate clot? He continued by asking, What is causing all this mourning on the Bingi grounds? I replied, Do you see daughter mourning? He answered, Yes. I was upset and walked away from him and went inside the tabernacle. 
since he didn't follow you straight, 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 straight in the tabernacle, came in the tabernacle, came in the tabernacle. Came in the tabernacle. Now the same brethren who were in the tabernacle, now the same brethren, now the same brethren who were in the tabernacle, he was burnt was now in the blazing fire key. In the blazing fire key, that night we could not he was sleep. burnt to death. All of us present watched the blazing fire. That night we could not simmer down to low flame. All and of ashes. us present watched the blazing the morning, fire. Not even until the it simmered dog down to low close. flames and ashes. In the morning, not even the stray dog could go close. From I know I self and trotting Nyabingi, it was the first time I witnessed wood of that size in a bingi fire. The youth who was burnt to death in the fire was in the tabernacle when I went in there. We all were there chanting. I don't remember the chant we were rocking to. All I know, when I looked, the youth started to chant with a rod in his hand. He was moving around the fire altar. When I looked again, he was running straight out of the tabernacle and started to ride the big fire key outside. When he rides the fire key, I was lost in astonishment. He did not go close to the blazing fire. He walked back away from the heat many times because the fire was raging hot. That was the first ride he performed. Haile Selassie no. The second time he rides the fire key, one brethren by the name of Fata grabbed the brethren and flashed him away. The youth got up with a speed running towards the fire key once again for the third time and decided to take plunge himself in the fire. As he approached the flames, he stepped on a piece of burning timber which rolled down on him and engulfed him in the judgment fire. We witnessed his two hands holding up above his head and heard his loud shouting, Ja! Ja! One of his hands disappeared first. The other slowly was devoured by the flames. Finally, his voice became silent. I turned fool. I did not know what to do. I was bewildered. I ran into the daughter's quarters and ran back. Out! The chanting never cease. Now we see warning signs that things were not right on the Bingi grounds. We reached there early afternoon as the construction of the tabernacle was not finalized. At the altar we found a young donkey cubby doing bodyguard duties. No one, no matter how hard they tried, no Rasta could remove the donkey from around the altar. And when Bible passages were chanting, the donkey started bray, pup, and kick. The donkey stayed until the bingi sealed and walked away in its own. At the fire key inside the tabernacle, there was a mother hen fowl. And when anyone approached the fowl, the response was noise and picking. No Rasta could chase that fowl away. The Thursday of the same week, 25 or 30 young men entered the daughter's quarters. They said, hey Rasta woman, we want one you to march with. Matriarch Nanny, who was lying on her bed, jumped up when she heard the voice and said, what you say? The boy replied, We will go march tomorrow, and we want one you to come with we. We know not one of them. Nanny said, Why the what's it, what's it not march? A highly Selassie. When the boys heard that, they brinished their guns and said we have to come with them. Nanny replied, Kill we. Why the what's it, what's it not right? Here, none of us leaving. The boys shut up their mouth and went away.
Listen to I. It was a sign shown to I and I on that bingy ground. Bongo Daniel played the bass drum and smashed it. Granny from Scott's Pass stripped herself born naked and beat one empress and her daughter. After Granny put up the fight, she had to be rushed to the hospital. There was one daughter who went down by the riverside at midday, and when I looked the daughter, was stripped naked, taking her bath, and when she finished, she did not put on her clothes. She started to oil her skin in public view. She had gone mad. The tribulations did not stop there. As soon as Sam Rasta tried to put on the daughter clothes, the river washed away a little boy. As soon as he was rescued, the river washed away another. No statement was given from Rasta to the police about the Rasta man who jumped in the fire key and was burnt to death. The Combhead people knew about it and they gave the newspaper reporters all the information. When the police and soldiers came, they did not talk to us too rough. The soldiers were more on our side. In the morning, we stood by the fire ashes and contemplating what to do. We did not want to leave the ashes. One brethren walked and told us that if we all can pay him, he would sweep the area very clean and remove the ashes with his truck. We then paid the brethren to clean the areas. However, before the brethren could get the broom in the truck, one brown and white dog sitting on his two back legs was watching every move we made. Suddenly the dog made a mad rush towards the ashes and grabbed a burnt part of the body and ran away. I cried out, mercy, mercy, see one dog grabbing peace day? No one knew where that dog went. After the bingy sealed in the morning, all the youths who came with their guns returned to the bingy grounds. They took out their guns, saying to put all the jewelry and money they had in their pockets and wallets and place them on the altar. They started to walk out of the tabernacle and told us everything is ours. Ancient priest Bongo Time demanded that they take up all the things that they placed on the altar. When the police arrived, they told priest Time to seal the bingi. The reply was no. This judgment will not seal up yet. Two more days to go. The bingi was for seven lights. On the seal up day, as we were packing and preparing to leave, two jeep loads of soldiers rolled up in the yard. We were listening to hear if someone would be charged with the youth death. To our surprise, the soldiers toss out two crocus bags full of ganja. It was the cleanest and sweetest ganja I ever smoked. That same bingi, one brethren trod up wearing crocus bag like a skirt around his waist. His skin and his toenails were so clean and pretty. He never opened his mouth and said a word in English. We don't know who he was and where he came from. He remained until the bingi sealed. In 1992 was a centenary year, and many Rastafari motorcade around the island and returned to Scott Pass bingi ground. One brethren in the group was sick, and we did not know about it until we returned to Scott Pass. We asked and begged Rasta with transport to take the sick man to the doctor. We got no assistance. Now Almighty Haile Selassie took over and when everyone went to bed in the man quarters, and while in the bed that brethren got stiff and they don't know, when they woke up in the morning, they did not find out until they realized that he was not moving. When they began to check, 
they found out he was dead. Almost everyone turned a fool and started to run off from the Bingi ground. The Isis was not sealed as yet, and from that time, man started to die on the Bingi ground. Ancient priest, Bongo Shefen. The caption of an image. Death of High Priest Bongo George Irons Priest George Irons had no one taking care of him and one day he said he wanted to make some porridge. He said he had some peanut in the house but he did not realize that the peanut was not in the package. Was not in the pack. As such, he mistakenly blended the frankincense such, and myrrh. He mistakenly blended the frankincense and myrrh to make the porridge. We don't know how he managed such a strong taste in his mouth. He tried to share the meal, but no one wanted it. The strong frankincense and myrrh eat away the walls of his stomach. He was admitted in the public hospital. All his intestines were badly damaged, along with vital organs, including his brain. He did not survive and became an ancestor. Conquering Lion Ark of the Covenant. If we yield to blandishment or threats, if we compromise when no honorable compromise is possible, our influence will be sadly diminished and our prestige woefully prejudiced and weakened. His Imperial Majesty Kadamawi Haile Selassie. The remainder of the book contains, contains photographs, several of Rastafari Aitrits, brothers and sisters, of Rastafari ancients, Rastafari matriarchs, matriarchs, His Imperial Majesty Emperor and Patriarchy the first, a brethren burning well chalice, Emperor Haile Selassie the first, Abengi Fayaki. And a one burning a chalice pipe. It, it will be fire, hot a fire, and a big fire. fire. Everyone, Everyone will, will get, get his pay for all the work they have done. It will be fire, hot a fire, and a big fire. Wise Mind Publications. Wise Mind Publications. Dot com. Dot com.